Good morning, everyone. This is the uh, regular session of the Yuma County Board of Supervisors. We'll also be sitting as all special taxing districts. This is the October 21st, 2019, uh, 9 a.m. Uh, board members will attend it either in person or by telephone. We were hoping Supervisor McLeod would be attending by phone, but that didn't work. <laughs> so we're moving on to the Pledge of Allegiance. And since he's here, we'll have him, you know, lead us on the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. First uh, item in the agenda is called to the public. Called to the public is held for the public's benefit to allow individuals to address issues within the board's jurisdiction. Board members may not discuss items that are not specifically identified in the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to Arizona revised statute, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, responding to criticism, or scheduling the matter for further discussion and a decision at a future date. Is there anyone that wants to address the board on an item that's not in the agenda? But we'll keep the call to the public open till the end of the meeting so that we will allow for people who may get in late or may have a question after they listen to something. Um, the next item is presentation proclamations and appointments where uh, during this segment of the agenda, board members may discuss the presentations and proclamations and may announce appointments to the Yuma County Planning and Zoning Commission in the Yuma County Board of Adjustment. No legal action will be taken again. There are no appointments that I know of. Uh, so we'll go on to uh, the presentation of the county line. So do we have a oh, proclamation is next? Yes, all right. So the presentation of the county line by Yuma 77, the Yuma County Government Channel. Yuma County Superior Court receives a visit from Arizona's Chief Justice. Public Works puts in place an incentive program that rewards staff and will help in maintaining our fleet. And the Sheriff's Office has some simple tips to keep you and your family safe this Halloween. These stories and more, this is your County Line. shy of his one-year anniversary being sworn in as Arizona's Chief Justice, the Honorable Robert Frutinel paid a visit recently to Yuma County Superior Court. The purpose of his visit is part of a five-year strategic agenda that focuses on court excellence. Meeting with court staff, the details of the agenda focus on examining the business operations of the courts at every level. I had the opportunity to come down to Yuma and, and meet with the judges and the people that work in the court system and, and been members of the community to talk about my strategic plan for the direction of the courts over the next five years and to see what's working in Yuma and what problems they're having and what we can do as the Supreme Court and the Administrative Office of the Courts to, to help out. So really it's an opportunity for me to listen to the community and to the judges in Yuma County. While the Arizona court system provides excellent service on a daily basis, the courts still have challenges. The Arizona Supreme Court is home to seven justices that are appointed by the governor. One of their many duties is to provide rules of procedure for all courts in Arizona. Anyone in the workforce understands that continuing education is the best way to stay on top of change in any given profession. Our Public Works Department understands this dynamic, especially with vehicles maintained, and their continuing goal of excellence in maintaining our fleet. Recently, the Yuma County Board of Supervisors gave a nod to the new Public Works Automotive Service Excellence, or ASE, incentive program that rewards staff for their continuing education, knowledge, and skill set. ASC certification by the National Institute of Automotive Service Excellence is designed to protect the consumer, along with recognizing technician skill sets and credibility. With this program in place, the staff at Fleet Services can now work toward an even higher goal. Once 75% of the technicians become certified, our fleet services would be considered ASE Blue Seal of Excellence recognized and would be the only government agency to achieve this level of professionalism in Yuma County. 
More knowledgeable and higher caliber technicians equates to a new level of confidence overall while providing quality services. It may not come as much of a surprise when you think about it, but pedestrian injuries are the most common injuries for children on Halloween. The Yuma County Sheriff's Office knows this all too well and encourages everyone to practice some simple tips so our little ghouls and goblins are safe. The history of this day is fascinating, dating back to as early as medieval times when souling was commonly practiced, an activity where people would go neighbor to neighbor exchanging prayers. Similar to trick-or-treating now, our ancestors didn't have to worry about the dangers of modern times. It's certainly a good time for everyone to consider some safety points. People want to be texting and walking. You know, put the phones down, put your electronics away, you know, don't have your earbuds in. Pay attention to what's going on. There's going to be a lot of traffic out there, a lot of pedestrians, so be mindful of everything that's going on, all your surroundings. And don't forget, the Yuma County Fairgrounds, in conjunction with the City of Yuma Police, will hold the 10th annual Scary and Safe Trick or Treat on October 31st from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. This massive event costs just $1 for entry. I'm Elia Juarez and this is your library update. Calling all country music fans, we've got a very special program coming up just for you. On Saturday, November 9th, the Yuma County Main Library and our librarian and historian Jim Patrick will be hosting a very special program with the Ken Burns documentary on PBS, which is a 16-part series all about the history of country music in America. Jim's program will take parts of that show and tell you about how country music has impacted the Yuma area. There'll also be a discussion afterwards, and you'll be able to talk about some of the great country music acts of the past, present, and maybe even the future, as well as some of the biggest names that have come to the Yuma area. For more information on this and all of our other great programs, please check out our website at yumalibrary.org and follow us on social media. We're on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. On this edition of our Department Spotlight Series, we take a closer look at the county constable. Constables are elected officials and we're elected every four years, and our duties are to perform executive orders for the courts. Summons, you have your civil, and criminal. When civil, when do an eviction, when you you're suing somebody, you know, for damages or money. Got your criminal when you actually committed a crime and you've been summoned to go to court. Subpoenas are when you are a witness on a crime or a victim, and will serve it. So you got to be in uh, that court date and time. And then you got your protections when somebody comes in and wants to do a order protection against you know, a individual person or actually a company. If consul were not here, then all of that will, you know, literally um, land on the sheriff's office. So all that paperwork, all that burning will come directly to them. So overall, we work with them, you know, to help them out, you know, with all this work coming out of the courts. You can learn more about the Yuma County Constable by navigating to yumacountyaz.gov. You'll find them under the Government tab. As we mentioned in previous installations of your county line, October is National Cybersecurity Month. Our dedicated cyber techs from Yuma County Information Technology Services have been busy getting the word out. Recently, they provided a free training for the public at the Yuma County Library. The information provided focused on helping you and your family be safe and secure in the cyber world. Technology is now intertwined with almost every aspect of our lives from cellular devices, vehicles, even your refrigerator at home is uh, attached to some sort of internet connection. And with that convenience that comes with technology comes at a risk and that's where cybersecurity really comes into play. They were able to give participants expert advice about surfing the internet more safely online identity, financial fraud, stalking, bullying, hacking, email spoofing, and more. Want to know more about cyber safety? Just navigate to yumacountyaz.gov and find our Information Technology Services Department under the Government tab. You'll find plenty of useful information under their Security tab. Before we go, a couple of important dates for you to remember. 
Saturday, October 26th, from 9 a.m. to noon, nationally certified technicians will be at Chuck E. Cheese for parents that have car seats for kids. These seats are commonly installed improperly. Our technicians can help correct this and teach you proper installation. It's free and goodie bags will be handed out while supplies last. And remember that Monday, November 11th is Veterans Day. Most of your county offices will be closed as we honor those men and women that have served our nation. We'd like to thank you for joining us for this County Line. If you'd like to watch past episodes, log on to yumacountyaz.gov forward slash VOD. And don't forget, you can join us live on Facebook. We'll see you next time. All right. Well, all right. Let's take a minute to pause. <laughs> right, the next item is um, an item where the, a proclamation, which is uh, proclaiming the month of October 2019 as Domest Domestic Violence Awareness Month. <coughs> it's a little late, but, you know, better late than never, huh, John? To proclaim yes. the month of October Domestic Violence Month. But before you start, let us read the proclamation. Okay. And then, you know, I will mention the, the different individuals that are here to receive the proclamation. You want to say something before that? I was just going to remind you that there was a lot of proclamations at the last meeting, so we decided to do it to this one, to <coughs> single it out. So all we right. were all by ourselves. All right, so <laughs> Supervisor Pankhurst will read the uh, proclamation. Uh, Domestic Violence Aware <laughs> Awareness Month yes. in Yuma County. Whereas October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and whereas the crime of domestic violence <clears throat> violates an individual's privacy and dignity, security and humanity, due to systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control and or abuse, including abuse to children and elderly, and whereas anyone can be a victim of domestic violence regardless of age, sex, ability, ethnicity, sexual orientation, social economic status, or religion, and whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide-ranging, directly affecting individuals and society as a whole, and whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month provides an opportunity for citizens to learn more about preventing domestic violence and to show support for the numerous organizations <coughs> and individuals who provide critical advocacy services and assistance to victims. Now, therefore, I, Marco A. Tony Reyes, Chairman of the Yuma County Board of Supervisors, hereby proclaims the month of October 2019 to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Yuma County. Thank you, Supervisor Pankerzy. Uh, and uh, I have a list of individuals that will be here to receive the proclamation. It begins with County Attorney John Smith, Eva Salazar, Andrea Mendez, Carabiela Sanchez, Lorena Garcia, Estrella Fitch, Alicia Franco, Kimberly Gardner, Sara Guerra, Leticia Figueroa, Linda King, Ruby Gaxiola, Esther Juarez Martinez, and Maria Toxac. Now, all of those individuals, uh, will, would, you, would you please stand up, come forward? I don't think, is it that many? Yes. Mr. Chairman, if I could just make a comment. Sure. Um, this. <clears throat> these events are, take place not be, from, solely because of my office, but these volunteers from various agencies and uh, service providers in Yuma County that make up what we call the, the Yuma County Victim Rights Committee. And the chairperson of that committee this year is Alicia Franco, and she will address the board or oh, accept the proclamation. Great, Alicia. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Um, Yes, as uh, Mr. Smith said, uh, we do have our committee is comprised of various agencies in Yuma, Yuma County, who assist victims of domestic violence. Uh, some of those uh, organizations are Community Legal Services, um, Healing Journey, Amberley's Place, uh, Arizona Children's Association, um, not to mention uh, the representatives from the Marine Base as well as YPG. So it is these uh, agencies who uh, want to make sure that the <coughs> victims do not feel alone, that they get the help they need, and they go from victims to being survivors. We hold these activities. Our, our um, 
Domestic Violence Awareness Vigil will be on Tuesday, October 29th. So the, the proclamation is in time for that as well. Uh, from 5.30 to 6.30 at uh, Centennial Heritage Area, which is the park right by the main library down on uh, 21st Drive. And we'd love to see as many of you there uh, as possible. We have a wonderful speaker lined up for that evening. We have some refreshments to those who attend. And um, we uh, have a balloon re release at the end of the evening uh, to honor victims and survivors. Thank so you. So we so welcome much. you all that evening. All right, well now we'll uh, hand over the proclamation. Would you please remain there and would you come over? Moving on, oh, yeah. see I told you it was going to look a little empty after that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you don't mind, you might want to step up. You want to stand? Okay, but there's plenty of spaces. You know, this is, this feels like, you know, school where no kid wants to sit in the front. You know, no, 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 the teacher's going to call on me or something. <laughs> All right, that takes care of the proclamation side of the agenda and we're moving on to the consent calendar. The following items listed under the consent agenda will be considered as a group and acted upon by one motion with no separate discussion unless a board, mem board member so requests. In that event, the item will be removed from the consent calendar for separate discussion and action. We have items one through, I think it's 16. One through 16, is there any uh, items that uh, any of the board members want to talk about? If not, I'll uh, entertain a motion to go ahead and approve consent calendar as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Then motion and second to approve the consent calendar as presented. Now, I do want to thank everybody that shows up just in case you get asked for questions. I know that you, know, you have a busy schedule <laughs> and I know some of you are here just in case, but you know, you just miss one meeting, it will call upon you. <laughs> just sure. So thank you for coming and showing up and, and Without any more further ado, all those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, we then move on to the um, regular <clears throat> items, which are discussion and action items. We'll wait until the room Learn clears. There we go. You're welcome. Hi, right, thanks. All right. The first item is coming to administrate, well, it's, it's a discussion and action item. We'll open each of these following items separately for discussion and action as appropriate. First one is county administration to authorize the county administrators to spend $24,260 from non-departmental other purchase services, budget, code, whatever, for 50% of the cost of a topographic survey of the Yuma County Fairgrounds in partnership with the city of Yuma to assist with temporary midway relocation efforts. Paul? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Paul Melcher, Director of Economic Development and Intergovernmental Affairs. Mr. Chairman, through the various updates that we've been providing essentially since about August of this year, we've been working toward both a temporary and a long-term fairgrounds relocation. This supports our temporary relocation 
from um, moving the uh, conflicts out of the midway over into the western portion of the parking area for the current fairgrounds. There are several maps depicting what we're attempting to do. Uh, first step in this process is to get the topographic survey completed so that we can then go to the um, fairgrounds. The fairgrounds have also commissioned a study with a company and consultant uh, called Populous. Populous is the company that uh, created the first long-term fair lo fairgrounds lo relocation. So we're going to reference and uh, access their uh, abilities again to be able to look at the temporary relocation. So if, once we get the topographic survey done, then Populous will be able to take a look at the existing uses in the midway, relocate those in the relocation area, and then we'll be able to identify how much that would cost and then uh, solidify the funding sources to get that accomplished. The two concerns here it, regarding this quote is that this is a, a to not exceed amount and then the engineering firm that's conducting the survey will also have to justify their hours moving forward. So uh, there won't be in, any exceedances of this amount. Well, we hope so. Now, just to get it clear in my mind, when we're looking at moving the midway, are we looking at moving just that portion of it to get it out of the fight plan, or are we working on a permanent solution for that? Uh, a relocation. Both. This is not. A, this is not. This is not the relocation. This is just moving it from the site to to another portion of the site. That's correct. So it's moving it, the midway into another site within the current footprint of of the fairgrounds. Okay. How, um, maybe, I, I don't want to overextend the, the, the item here, but how is the original uh, process to move, to try to relocate the fairgrounds for? Uh, actually, we have our first meeting this afternoon to start discussing that to, and to set up the, however we're going to start approaching that, yes. Okay. Thank you. So this is just a study to move the, the, the tall midway right. That's correct. A lot of the midway portion is covered by the state clear zone. The airport clear zone is smaller, but at this point we figure there are enough co conflicts within both of the clear zones that it's best just to remove all of those from that area and relocate them into the western portion of the fairgrounds. Okay. That's going to change the way you come in and the way that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. most, most of the uh, farm exhibits come in through that side, the Pacific Avenue side. Well, anyway, I, you guys are going to give us a further report. This is to pay for half of the cost of the topographical survey, right? That's correct, sir. All right. Any, any, other, any more discussion, comments? Good. We've been, Mr. Chairman, we, Paul, I'm on that committee, and we have been meeting on a regular basis, um, not only trying to find funding to relocate the Midway, but also to um, make sure all those nonprofits that have booths, food booths, also um, are relocated to, and that's what the populace is going to do to make sure that the flow of the fairgrounds um, is advantageous for everyone. Um, but we're also working on finding a new location for the fairgrounds altogether. All right. Okay, um, do I hear a motion to approve the uh, request? So moved. Is there a sec? Second. Okay. The motion and second to approve the request as presented. Um, anybody um, have any questions? Okay. No, just a comment. Um, okay. Just so the public knows, there will be no change this year. Mm -mm. But this, but we're looking yeah. to make those changes by the following year. Yeah. You mean there won't be any change next year, right? Because next year is when the fair happens, right? Yeah. In April, fair, yeah, March oh, 3rd, yeah. Right. The end of March, that'll be exactly the same. It April won't. 2021. All right. All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. The next, thank you, Paul. The next item is also for county administration, and this is to authorize the chairman of the board of supervisors to sign a letter to the Arizona State Park and Trails Department in support of the continued development of the Arizona Peace Trail Alignment in Yuma County. Paul. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our local working group has been working to develop the and solidify the Yuma County portion of the alignment of the Arizona Peace Trail since approximately May of 2017. It's been an arduous task only because we got and presented a proposed trail to BOR and then BOR has to go through its regimen of envir environmental assessments and reviews. And at the timing of and the writing of this item, it was just coincidental that we received 
Notice that the proposed alignment has been uh, put out to our local, local working group for comment. Um, we're going to be hosting a meeting on November 8th to provide more formal comments about the alignment. But just to give you an, a sense of where we're going is um, ultimately we think that this is pretty close to the true alignment, except I've already received some feedback on some minor tweaks. But um, this alignment represents a, a significant improvement about what the current uh, alignment involves. Ultimately, what we're looking here is that Arizona Parks and Trails is starting to get on their um, radar as well in terms of how this might eventually be some kind of asset for them as well. Um, we know that there are some notable large parks in Utah and Nevada where the state operates those and is able to put more money into it and support that. So it might be a concept here for the future. We've, uh, as the county, have submitted several support letters for Arizona Peace Trail. La Paz and Mojave counties have also, because it, that circular route of about 160, uh, 670 miles incorporates uh, a route through all three counties. So Mr. Chair, it's uh, simply a letter again, just showing our support and that we're still moving forward in terms of the Yuma County portion and developing the Arizona Peace Trail. I don't see any problem with that. No, I'd, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just thank Paul too for all of his hard work on this. This has been a, uh, uh, an arduous task that uh, <laughs> to, to take on. And uh, the nice thing about state parks getting into this as well is the fact that it opens up OHV funds um, mm. to be able to help maintain it and sign it. So uh, it's really a good thing that state parks is wanting to, is looking at possibly getting on board or helping out with it. So, but just, I just mainly, I just want to thank Paul for all of his hard work on this. Well, all right, would you make a motion? I'll make a motion we accept it. Or we do, we uh, right, right write a letter of support. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second to write a letter of support for the Arizona Peace Trail. Um, any more discussion? If no more discussion, we'll vote. Uh, just one point. The, the letter is already drafted. Just be authorizing you to sign. Oh, all right. Well, so, so sign the letter, authorizing the chairman to sign the yes. letter of support. <laughs> all right. With that clarification, um, all those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Paul. And we keep moving to the next item. The next item is the county, for also for county administration, is discussion and possible action to authorize Yuma County Board of Supervisors to sign a letter supporting ratification of the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement. Yes, Mr. Chairman, at the last meeting, we had talked about uh, calling in to representatives Gozar and Grijalva in order to see what support we could lend toward getting the USMCA at least to a floor vote in the House of Representatives. In the meantime, there was another action that came up. There was coordination between the border counties supporting the USMCA, and another letter came from that. So what we did as staff is we tweaked the overall letter that was um, supported by the border counties, um, made it and rewrote it so that it reflects a Yuma County focus, and then we presented it to the board for your signature and consideration. You know, consideration those, signature. those two never agree on anything. And unfortunately <laughs> for us, they have agreed not to support the, uh, the U.S.-Mexico trade agreement, which is unfortunate because I think that <clears throat> the arguments they both make make sense. I mean, they make sense, but... I mean, what trade agreement is possibly all perfect and meets every requirement of every congressman? It's just almost impossible to get that way. So um, it's really disappointing that we can't get, you know, get them to get beyond, you know, their particular, you know, uh, concern with the with the with the uh, with the uh, trade agreement. But I mean, all we can do is keep trying, and I feel that uh, you know we should continue to support. I mean, the impact of the trade. Uh, agreement in this area is quite large. So, uh, does anybody else have any comments? No, it's we need to make sure that um, we keep supporting it and hopefully change some minds up there. All right. Well, okay. Uh, any, uh, I'll entertain a motion to to write a write the letter of support. When you um, when you write the Yuma County Board of Supervisors, are you going to draft a letter with all of us signing it? Mr. Yeah. Chair, that's what. Yeah. Is, that, is that what it looks like? Yeah, it's already drafted. It's already drafted. It's, attached. it's, it's yeah, ready for right. everybody's signature. Perfect. Okay. All right. Oh, there it is, the letter. Uh, hey, if there's no more discussion, I'll, I'll, um, I'll entertain a motion to go ahead and approve uh, the letter, support. 
So moved. Do you have a second? Second. Then a motion and second to approve sending a letter of support from the Yuma County Board of Supervisors supporting the ratification of the United States Mexico Canada agreement. Any more discussion? There's no more discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? The motion carries. Uh, discussion uh, item number four county administration discussion possible but before we leave item number three we talked about this a couple of years ago but i don't think we moved forward with it i just want to make sure that that all of us understand that in situations like this it is it probably plays better when you belong to some of these groups we do belong to the arizona uh, border coalition but we were talking about becoming members of the border trade alliance We've been discussing that for a while. Revive that for us, will you? Just make sure that, you know, because I think that what happens is uh, some of the connections we have uh, leave a little to be desired in terms of being active in, in, in this particular process until something happens like this. Mr. Okay? Chairman, would it? Membership, what yes. does it imply? What we'll get does that it somewhere mean? Down. That kind of thing. Okay, cost okay. and so forth. Right? All right. Uh, I, did we have a motion? Yeah, we did, right? Yeah. We had a second. Yes, a motion. Yes, we, second. we voted on it. So we're moving on to item number four, which is discussable and possible, possible action regarding the following legislative items, update any legislative proposals relating to CSA summit and or the 2020 state legislative session and update regarding strategies relating to federal priorities. Paul Melcher, you're up. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I really covered all of my updates through those three letters of support. So my question to the board would just be simply, uh, we have the CSA summit coming up. Uh, I have it, the, you know, the document available. If any of the board members had any questions or would like to discuss something in advance, or if not, that would be uh, my summary and presentation for that item today. All right. Um, you know, we did get a sort of like a, uh, an agenda for those attending. Are we all attending? Yeah. We all attending? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we basically know, you know, we're looking forward. This is next week. It's between Monday and Wednesday, and we should be in uh, Phoenix, somewhere out in the eastern portion of Phoenix. Um, Maricopa. 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 Yeah. That's Option. a casino out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Option. It's different from the one we were before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go to Maricopa and then turn south. Okay. All right then. We'll see you there. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Chair. All right, the next item in the agenda is for planning and zoning, isn't it? Yeah, it and is. It, you know, it's a planning and zoning agenda. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, we do have to mention the full legal description of the property sites where all rezoning cases are available, which is remain, Scott. Would you stay back a little bit? Yeah, I've got something. And so do you, Paul. I need you to stay back, okay? Just stay back. Sit, Just stay there. Sit, man. <laughs> Please. There's something at the end of the agenda that I want him to listen to. Please uh, sit. Yes. Go ahead. Please so stay. Remain. Yeah. No, sit in a different location. Um, okay, we do have a planning and zoning agenda items. As I was mentioned before, full legal description of property sites for all rezoning cases are available for public review at the Yuma County Board of Supervisors Office. This will be, uh, I think, reg a regular public hearing item. Staff will make a full presentation on each of the following items, followed by a separate discussion, public hearing, and action by the Board of Supervisors. This is a discussion and possible action concerning adopting an overlay district for the dark sky ordinance. Maggie, thank you for bringing up a little controversial item for today's <laughs> meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this item, uh, took, the initial discussion took place back on uh, July 22nd. And at that time, uh, the Board of Supervisors asked for two alternatives to be brought back uh, for consideration. Um, included in the packet is uh, proposed language for the amendment to the zoning ordinance, which would est establish the dark sky overlay district. And then also um, two maps are included that uh, would uh, include, one of the maps is for the overlay district to encompass everything from uh, Foothills Boulevard to the eastern uh, county boundary, and which, which would also include Martinez Lake. And the other map um, would be uh, encompassing the area uh, for everything east of the Gila Mountains to the eastern county boundary and the Martinez Lake area. Uh, the original presentation that was uh, brought to you back on, uh, uh, or in July, 
included um, uh, an amendment which would uh, affect the entire county, uh, the unincorporated area of the county. So this proposal if, is Narrowed. to obtain input as to whether you would like um, the overlay district to affect a small, smaller area of the county. And so, I just want to ask real quick, can you bring, do you have it on the, the map on, you can bring up on the screen? Mr. Chairman, I do not have a presentation. Okay, for some the reason it's not coming up on the computer. I'm trying to get it to come up, and it's not, oh, there it goes, okay. All right, well, here's what I understand about this dark sky ordinance. If we pass it, it doesn't apply to incorporated areas themselves, right? So the city of Yuma, the city of San Luis, the city of Somerton, Welton, they don't, they don't necessarily, they're not considered as part of this overlay. So when we discussed, you know, we discussed about the, the, the reasons why people move out in the county. We discussed, you know, all those pros and benefits and, and uh, cons. And what came out was that some people really misconstrued the ordinance to, to encompass a lot more than it really does. But, you know, this is part of the process to sort of clean that up and make sure that people understand that what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to protect the views of people who move out in the county to to be able to see the skies and not have this secondary light that comes in and sort of makes everything hazy. Uh, that's as far as I got there with that. Is there anything else that came up between now and then? And uh, what we're doing at, right now is just looking at the district, the overlay of the district, right? Correct. And we're focusing on two particular maps. Correct. Right. Okay. That's just, and you only had the one letter <laughs> against it? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, we did receive a um, an email uh, in opposition to uh, the proposed dark sky ordinance. Well, actually, I don't even think that's so much in opposition. It's in opposition because we don't include those cities. So in reality, what he's saying is, yeah, if you're not going to do it, if everybody else isn't going to do it, what are you doing yeah. for? And again, I think that that begs the distinction or the clarification that what we're trying to do is trying to do this for the outlaying areas of the county where there's still some well, there's still a way to, to see the sky without the light pollution that's really evident already in the cities that is too late to, to, to control or to manage, right? Right. Right. So what do you guys think? Which one? Which overlay? Because it's mostly in your districts. Yeah, I'm trying to figure so. out if I can get it to come up here. All right. The second one. Um. Mr. Trevor, like I said, one of the maps depicts uh, the county for everything or... All properties in the county from Foothills Boulevard East and Martinez Lake. The other map includes everything east of the Gila Mountains and Martinez Lake. So the difference is whether we take Foothill. in the Foothills yeah, area. Foothills or not. Yeah. And that's where I'm hearing a lot of the people wanting it is in the Foothills. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Included. And and right now I think if we go off Foothills Boulevard, it it you don't have a lot of commercial growth along Foothills right now. Uh, there's a few businesses, but not near what there is at Fortuna with uh, all the uh, fries and everything going up there. You know, I'd like to see Foothills Boulevard be the, the, the cutoff and then also include Martinez Lake and then on East. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Fine with that. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fine that's with that. Yeah. Uh, that. So you want, you want it to be cut off so it doesn't come this way then from the Foothills this way? Right. From some of the points in there? Well, like I said, I don't see, it sounds like there's, a, you know, not really wanting to come west with it. Um, and with all the lights that are already in place, it would be hard to enforce something like that. Um, and I got one question too, is this, is, are the people that are there now, are they grandfathered? Is this only for new existing residences and businesses that have to meet this? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, the ordinance would apply to any new uh, development that occurs in, um, on private properties. Um, or if anybody uh, requests a building permit for an expansion of an existing use, they may also have to comply with comply the with ordinance. It. Yes, bring the property into compliance with the ordinance. Oh, now, yeah. um, just for <clears throat> clarification, um, if we say Foothills Boulevard is the um, western boundary of the district, mm -hmm. would you want everything, all properties on both sides of Foothills Boulevard included, or just um, do we take the center line of Foothills Boulevard East? I wouldn't say we just have to do a center line east. East, yeah. All right. But also, uh, that would also include North Foothills, too. Let me open it yes. to the public, okay? We've got 
plenty of information, but this is a public hearing section. So let me open this hearing to the public. Is there anyone in the public that wants to address that hasn't been asked to remain, that wants to address the board? No? Okay, well then I'm closing the public hearing portion of it with the caveat that, you know, people have, this is what happens all the time. We go through this process and we open it to the public and then after it's done, you know, somebody, you know, comes up and says, well, I didn't know. <laughs> well, there's been plenty of opportunities. We discussed this, it was in the paper. And, uh, you know, no, Mr. Chairman, that's a difference. This is a discussion item. This is not the public hearing for no, no, the no, actual wait a adoption of the text. Oh, wait a minute. If, well, if the board, this is to seek direction okay. as to whether the board wants to Well, it to is under the hearing item, so I assume a, that we could have a public hearing item. Yes. But it's fine. It, it, look, we're, it's clear. Even if, we, you know, even if it's not necessarily there, you, I, I don't call to the public, I would have opened it. So, Let's just say that you know we we've allowed people to make a comment, and then we'll bring it back to the full hearing when we are supposed to approve it. So you just want a direction today, yes. basically what the district's lines would be. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, right. so you've got that now. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Okay, right? wait a minute. Oh, okay. Uh, Supervisor McLeod, Supervisor Simmons, and then Supervisor Pankers. Supervisor McLeod. Uh, yeah, a couple things. So <clears throat> the the text is not yet complete. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, the uh, text uh, for the proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance is included in your packet, and that would be the draft text that uh, is taken back to the Planning and Zoning Commission and then brought back to the board for um, amending the zoning ordinance. Okay, and then uh, you said something a moment ago that caught my attention, and, and let's clarify because um, if an existing business or home let's just use a business wants to expand on their property mm -hmm. uh did you say they would have to retrofit everything to fit the ordinance no mr I chairman new lighting new... new lighting would have to comply with the ordinance okay they wouldn't have to go back and retrofit mm -hmm. right the existing mm -hmm. okay, okay good. all right good uh, you um what was i going to say now I totally lost my train of thought. Go ahead and diddle in. Let me That's okay. It happens to a lot of us. Supervisor bankruptcy. <laughs> have you <laughs> forgotten what you wanted to say? Oh, no. I already, I already said you already what I said it? to say. It, the area would be from Foothills Boulevard east to the county line and the, and the Martinez Lake area, correct? Yes. I do want to clarify that I wasn't too confused about whether we had a full hearing in it because it does say staff will make full presentations on each of the following items, followed by a separate discussion, public hearing, and action. So it could be a public hearing, you know, if it's actually, you know, published this way. So if people came, we would have to open it to them. Okay. Well, I remember what I was going to say there, Mr. Chairman. It just too much me, time in between. Uh, them, too much time. <laughs> Mainly, I just want to encourage everybody out there, please make comments, whether you're for or against it. It's not too late. We want to hear from you. I mean, this is not something that we're wanting to push if, if the majority of the people don't want it. But from what I'm hearing, the majority do want it. So just I'm just encouraging everybody, please let us know what you think. Right. Do you have enough direction? Thank you very much. I would just want you to include in the motion um, which uh, option you prefer, which is from the what one I'm that hearing, the is the one from Fortuna. Boulevard East and Martinez Lake. That's right. Mm -hmm. now, do we want to include those businesses? So it's center line east? Center line east. Center line on east. one half of the street, they're going to have to comply on the other half. They're not going they're to. They're not going to. <laughs> yeah. um, well, it would be almost impossible to come up with the cutoff line. If you say the street like you know Fortuna, I think it's like I said, you know, it's gonna be got easier to doing it center line okay. east. All right. Well, it'll be darker in the other side. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Maggie. You don't need a. Do you need a motion for this? No. Yes. Okay. The motion is to give instructions to staff to prepare a dark sky zoning ordinance that begins in um, the Foothills. Is that Foothills Boulevard or Fortuna? Yeah. Foothills. Uh -huh. Boulevard? You know the east side of Foothills for the bar, and it goes all the way to the end of the county, and then uh, include Martinez Lake, which is map I think one. Yes. Just a little extended mm -hmm. over. All right. Uh, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a sec second? Second. Is motion and second to that effect? All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. You have your you know, your instructions. Thank you. Next item in the agenda is the events calendar. I think. <coughs> 
which is where board members and county administrators will report or may discuss events attended to be attended on behalf of the county, may present a brief summary of current events, and may update the schedule for future board supervisor meeting. meetings as appropriate. No legal action will be taken pursuant to Arizona revised statute. Now, I have asked, you know, this is the reporting part. So I have asked you to stay because we took part of a meeting with the um, mayor of San Luis and his staff last week. Uh, you know, um, County Administrator Susan Thorpe, Paul Melcher, the uh, Health Department Director um, Diana Gomez, and uh, who else? That it? That was it. We had a meeting with uh, the uh, Mayor of San Luis Rio Colorado and his staff, and um, you know I wanted to make sure that we had a chance, an opportunity to talk a, a, little, <coughs> a little bit about that briefly, and then just sort of sum it up by saying. And the reason I asked you know the Public Works Director to stay is because. In that meeting, the public works director was there, and I mentioned you uh, as sort of, uh, you know, our public works director. And uh, I wanted to make sure that you knew that your name had been mentioned. So if you get a weird call from, you know, some gentleman speaking Spanish wanting to talk to you, you would <laughs> you would realize it's probably the public works director from Mexico trying to get in touch with you. I don't think he will, but I did mention the chairman. He's not the public works director. Oh, for clarification, get the wrong Mr. Chairman. Guy? He's uh, uh, Dave is the uh, director of facilities management. Now. Oh, well, well, close enough. Close enough. Make that point. Close enough. Mr. Chairman, I'll make sure that I relay the message to Josh. All oh, right, Josh. Okay. Well, one of those mornings. Um, <laughs> Paul, remain for a little while, okay? Until we get through this, and maybe you can address that issue at the end of the, you know, the presentation from the rest of us as part of the administration report. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Supervisor Pancrasy, would you enlighten us with all the stuff you did? <laughs> um, I attended the Fair Midway relocation meeting, um, and we had some interesting possibilities for funding that were brought up, um, positive possibilities. I attended the um, LEPC meeting, and uh, the state team came down and presented their vehicle that is a laboratory in itself that can test anything and everything um, in in the in in the like a terrorist attack or whatever they could test and find out what everything is and it was very very interesting. I attended the NAU advisory board meeting. Um, I spent three days in uh, Tucson at the Rural Transportation Summit, and I can't stress again how important it is for us to count everybody in the census um, because because of what important it is because of the dollars that we get both federally and state for um, for programs and operations so um, and coming up I'm attending the CSA legislative summit uh, the 2019 annual emergency response annual meeting and the southwest Arizona town hall with a focus on strong families well, so those are what well, I'm going to thank be you doing. supervisor McLeod yeah, I had the privilege of uh, going on a tour of the Palo Verde nuclear plant. Um, oh, no wonder you shined this morning. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, that really point, interesting. Sorry. They have, it's a 4,000 acre site. They have 200 security officers. I know. The entire town of Buckeye has 100 uh, police. So it's, uh, it's well guarded, very secure, and the uh, safety measures were amazing. Um, there's a process for putting on protective clothing and then taking it off and uh, then after that there were four different checks that we went through to check that we weren't carrying any sort of contamination out of the containment building. It was just amazing the attention to detail. Uh, also uh, attended the meeting with, with uh, Chief Justice Brutonel where he uh, put forth his uh, way he envisions the courts going for the next five years and uh, there's going to be some expense and so I told him I thought the state should take care of it not put it on the back of the county. Good. And also came to the fair relocation committee uh, with Supervisor Pancras and I think we have one this afternoon too. Yes. And of course we'll be at the uh, CSA summit next week. Thank you. John, I'm sorry we'll all be gone. <laughs> oh don't be sorry. <laughs> for your, for vigil. your vigil. For the vigil. Yeah. Yeah, for your vigil. We'll More find somebody to deliver the, the proclamation. Yeah, 
but thank you all. I know you're all very supportive of those events, but I understand the conflict. Thank you. Supervisor Simmons. Uh, I had a quick one. Um, you were in the war trail. I had a LEPC meeting as well. Got a chance to speak with Foothills Rotary, which I think Russ did the following weekend, right? Oh, yeah, I did speak at Rotary, yeah. So, um, also been uh, talking with State Trust and Public Works. We're putting together a cleanup of uh, Foothills, dumping sites out there, trying to get uh, 40th Street cleaned up, as well as Fortuna Wash. So, that's an ongoing problem. And that's about it. All right. Supervisor Porches, I do, before you begin, I do want to mention Supervisor Porches was part of that delegation to San Luis, so just in case you didn't include in your report. Uh, yeah, I was going to, and I also was going to include that it took us an hour and 45 minutes to get across. and Two hours. To <laughs> secondary. <laughs> I will, that's the last time I'll write with Tony coming across. <laughs> 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 Can't help it. You know, <laughs> you know I, what? I, I wanted I, you to get the full treatment. I sacrificed <laughs> I my second secondary. Oh. Well, I, could, I yeah. stayed with him in the car. <laughs> to be, know, to I, could be across, I could have come across like in two minutes. Yeah. Well, he went in the body search, but the cabin search. <laughs> no. <laughs> didn't, get, didn't get it anyway. All right. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> well, you know, you got the full the full treatment. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been as memorable. But uh, I, you know, be, besides that that uh, that meeting with that we had with the, the mayor of uh, San Luis, Mexico, uh, I also attended the transportation rural summit, mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was well attended. Um, uh, some good information and uh, forefront it there was was uh, represented. I mean, I think we we saw some things that uh, forefront has been doing, so the whole state is aware of it. That's it. Well, I, I'll go back a little bit to that meeting that we uh, had with the mayor and his staff. He had, I don't know, three or four different members of his staff, the economic development director out there who, who connected with Paul and, um, you know, the public works director, which I got the wrong, I forgot the facilities management director, but the public works director and the health department, which, you know, again, you know, the idea was to connect these departments so that they can approach, they can approach us and we can approach them with that. You know, the, the initial situation, which is normally you get in touch with people when you need them, but, you know, in this particular case, I think the relationship should be before that. You know, I mean, we talk about how, you know, health issues knows no borders. And, you know, obviously that's really just one of the examples. I mean, when, when you know, when they have a tuberculosis uh, outbreak or, or when they have a Zika outbreak or Western Nile outbreak, I mean, that, that, Continued communication between health departments could be the difference between, you know, really stopping something major, getting on this side. And on the economic development side, it's always, you know, it's always good to know who the players are, at least the official players are in, in terms of, you know, what's going on in economic development. Um, it, it, what seems a little, you know, and it was mentioned before, um, what seems a little difficult is the continuity that, that we continually search for, and it's really not that good across the border because mayors served for three years and they used to not be able to get reelected. And every time a new one came in, you know, it would take, uh, said before, it would take a year before they finally settled and then you deal with them for a year and then they'll be on their way out the next year after that. So it was difficult. But I think that the idea of having quarterly meetings or maybe biannual meetings with, between different officials from this side and officials from that side, facilities management would be one of those. Uh, you know, it's probably a good idea because, again, uh, establishing the lines of communications are really important. Next time, maybe we can deal a little bit with issues like public safety, which, I mean, it's it's a really uh, it's a really a high level issue uh, across the border. Those type of things, I think, work well when you establish relationships that help you, you know, get get to whomever you need to get to quicker and have them respond accordingly. So. I just wanted you guys to stay over. I know that you were there, so if you want to say anything, this is the time. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'll take that brief allowance. Uh, I did, the other thing that we wanted to emphasize as part of these meetings is that the mayor of San Luis is looking to break also that um, cycle of how they've been looking at how they implement programs. They're looking to become more sophisticated, get through life cycle programs so that when they can 
when if they have to do or with the eventuality when they do leave office then they've set up some programs so that the next mayor coming in it provides them continuity in terms of capital improvements programs and other things as um, supervisor gray as was mentioning when you look at it overall when you have that strict cutoff and everything gets changed over and you don't know exactly what was occurring with the previous administration uh, this won't hamstring the next administration moving forward and will help develop a little bit more continuity from that standpoint so i think that was one of the other key takeaways from that yeah it, it was and you know not to continue to you know make that point over and over again but i mean i during the and it's been like that for a long time whenever there is any developments on the border and the american side it was very difficult to coordinate it with the mexican side so if you have for example border construction and it, it's not matched across the border really what you had is really very good facilities but then across the border you would have nothing and it would it was always a problem coordinating those two and i think right now the current mayor from, in san luis is the same it's from the same party that the mexican president is and they have pretty good relationship he may he may help out to be able to coordinate things like you know the sheriff's department rescue efforts or you know those type of those type of interchanges there's a lot of uh, toxic uh, materials that cross the border every day that most people don't realize it's happening and uh, i'm not sure whether there's a coordinated effort to to deal with uh, spills and those kind of things, I, I'm not sure. It could be that the local uh, authorities, San Luis, Arizona authorities, have that kind of an agreement, but I think it goes beyond that. They travel our roads all the way up to until they leave Yuma County. So it'd be it'd be nice to know whether there's you know those kind of uh, agreements. Uh, I, I was thinking of taking Tony Badia down there when I first initially thought about taking the group, but they were just getting to be sort of unmanageable. The group was getting too big and I didn't know how long it was going to take us to get back and, and <laughs> whether they hours. had passports over there, you know, whether they had enough no, time, no. that kind of stuff. Next time I'm taking Supervisor McLeod and, you know, going through an immersion program to see how he reacts to all this stuff. Thank you, Paul. All right. Mr. Sherman, uh, Susan Thorpe, County Administrator, she's out attending the ICM. You did look a little different. You started saying <laughs> Susan Thorpe, and I said, okay, well, that looks Sorry, I mean, a little bit under the weather. change over time. Gil Villegas. Yeah, uh, Gil Villegas, CFO. Apologize for that. Um, I'm going to be uh, acting county administrator until Wednesday when she's expected to be back. It's been a busy month for her. She uh, On Wednesday the 9th, she attended the, uh, uh, actually, she delivered a presentation at ASU. They have an MPA, Master of Public Administration program, and she was asked to speak to the students over there. Um, on the 10th, Thursday, she traveled to Tucson to attend the Arizona Border Administrators and Managers meeting. She also attended the Rural, Rural Transportation Summit, and right now, like I said, she is attending in Nashville, the ICMA meeting. So that's all the update that I have on her behalf. Should we be concerned? <laughs> Should we be concerned? Uh, no? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just testing. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Hill, for, you know, taking over the reins while she's out. I mean, I'm sure you, you're capable of, you know, handling everything that comes your way. Thank you very much. All right. Then uh, is there anything else? You know, we can finish this meeting before 10. Oh, one more thing. I think that, I don't know if this is the case, but I think that Susan told me on an unofficial way that the city of Yuma had responded to my suggestion that we place, you know, some digital signs in front of the building here, you know, and I think the response was negative to begin with. Oh. Come up, come up for a minute, will you? This is not an agenda, but it's part of the reporting system. <laughs> uh, Chairman Reyes, um, Supervisors, uh, we did receive a letter from the, from the Community Development Department simply reminding uh, the fact that the building resides within the historic overlay district and there are some certain guidelines to it we need to at least be aware of and attempt to adhere to. Um, as far as digital signage goes, that would fall under their, their signage permitting process, which is a little bit apart. They would like the opportunity to review anything that's submitted as far as changes to the exterior of the building. We'll, we'll, we'll make the signs look like for windows. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just uh, since I'm here, just uh, invite you all, if you like, right on the other side of this wall right here, we're just wrapping up completion of the, what we call phase one remodeling for our HR department. We're actually starting the move-in process, so if you get a chance to walk through, looking pretty good.
All right. Well, thank you, facilities manager. <laughs> and I do have my tenure card, so I'd be happy to go on. <laughs> well, they will, you know, we'll try to avoid the cavity search part. All right. Anything else? No? All those in favor of the motion to cancel. Move on. John's like, let's go. <laughs>